hope you haven't been waiting too long. Good, good. So I'm uh, Dr. Birch. I'll be administering the cryopreservation procedure today. The big day has come. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for it? That's great. Great. Good to hear. So I know that uh, they've already gone over all the details with you and they probably had you sign a million different forms and read a million different contracts and terms and conditions and whatnot. But you know, in the event that you didn't read the fine print or really didn't have time to it, whatever, nobody has enough time, right? Except you someday. <laughs> I'd like to go over the details of what's going to happen today, okay? So the procedure will involve me putting on some monitors, so we'll have a look at your vital signs all throughout the process. We'll be inducing general anesthesia, and then we'll be um, washing out your blood and replacing it with a vitrification solution and subsequent, subsequently will cool you down very, very gradually to minus 196 degrees Celsius and transfer you to long-term storage in one of our liquid nitrogen pods, ready to be awakened someday in the future. Yeah? Okay, good. And don't worry, we'll go over everything in detail when we get to it, okay? Great, so let me just get a few things double-checked here. So, got our hydromorphosome, the tassel pen, portable. Solution V. So just checking IV bags here. but we've only just gotten licensed to cryopreserve living people, you know, as to make it an elective medical procedure. In the past, as you know, people had to have been declared clinically and legally dead before we could initiate the cryopreservation procedure, but with our new licenses, we hope to be able to achieve much better success rate in the future. Not that we haven't been uh, very successful in the past, but there's no denying that preserving living human beings is much preferable and much more effective than preserving people who are on the brink of death. Yeah, as you know, we don't see legally dead or clinically dead by today's standards as, you know, biologically dead. Certainly you're on the verge of death when your heart stops and your lungs start, stop uh, pumping oxygen throughout your body. But there are and have been lots of ways that we could remedy that. But you being alive, you won't have to uh, endure nearly as much medication and uh, mechanical intervention as we uh, as we would otherwise. Yeah. So let's just see. Fill out the charts as well here. What are you uh, most looking forward to in the future? Flying cars? Going to Mars? Just 
living the eternal good life on universal basic income, pursuing your dreams and hobbies, friends and family. Who wouldn't want that? All the cool tech they're gonna have, I mean, we can't even imagine it today, right? I mean, we all have dreams, but in the future, everything we dream of today is probably um, seem anachronistic and retro, vintage, naive, probably. Go. Have any ideas on when you would like to be woken up? No. Okay. No, you've said as much here in your file. But okay. So. through. Yes, we have 
a reading and everything is fine. Okay, a bit elevated, you nervous? Don't worry, that's completely fine. It's normal, don't worry. No. Okay, so I'm gonna take your temperature. I'm gonna do that. On the forehead. Next, we've got 
lemon, and that's to reduce anxiety and relax the body as well. How are you feeling? Feeling any different? Okay. Okay. Now the mylocurium next part is a muscle relaxant. Okay. So that's generally kind of like it in the name. Relax the body and it's also going to relax the muscles in your throat and make it easier to intubate you safely, so your body won't have any um, inherent uh, negative response to the introduction of a foreign object, which it otherwise might. before that. So the thing we're going to do after the profile is taken effect, which it will very shortly, or very short time after we administer it, is start the vascular washout, which is gradually pumping out your own blood and introducing a base perfusid, which is going to be mixed with the vitrification solution, or solution V, and we're going to do that very, very gradually to avoid any osmotic injury that might happen and might damage the cells if they're hit with a high molar or high concentrate solution right from the start. So your body is going to feel the change, the cells in your body are going to feel the change, but it's going to be very, very gradual, so they're going to have time to get used to it, so to speak. Or what it's made of? You want to hold this? Sure. I have that right here. So the base perfusid, which we're introducing into our body first, very gradually, and again, it's made up of one millimolar calcium chloride dehydrate, two millimolar magnesium chloride hexahydrate, 90 millimolar glucose, 45 millimolars mannitol, 45 millimeter millimolars alpha-lactose monohydrate, 28.2 millimolars of potassium chloride, 7.2 millimolars of potassium phosphate dibasic trihydrate, 5 millimolars of glutathione reduced, 1 millimolar of adenine HCI, and then 10 millimolars of sodium bicarbonate. Again, that's the base perfusant. So that's going into your body first. As we're uh, pumping out the blood, this is going in 
And when we have a high enough concentrate of the base perfused, we're mixing in, in the tub. Uh, let's just say it for simplicity's sake. We're mixing in with the base perfused uh, solution V, or vitrification solution. And that I have right here, that is 22.3% dimethyl sulfoxide, 12.8% formamide, 16.8% ethylene glycol, and there's N-methyl formamide, 3-methoxy, 1.2 propanediol, polyvinyl perylidone K12, and then X1000 ice blocker and C1000 ice blocker. So, the point of the vitrification solution, the reason that uh, we don't want blood in your system when we freeze you down, is that, as you know, the body is made of approximately 70% water, and a large part of that, not all, all of it, but much of it, is blood. So when we're washing out the blood and replacing it with the vitrification solution, we're actually not freezing you, even though we're cooling you down to extremely cold and uh, cryogenic temperatures. But the cells in your body, the organs in your body, they're very susceptible if they're exposed to ice crystallization, which is what water does when it's cooled down. But the vitrification solution does not freeze or does not uh, form crystals in the same way that water does. Instead, it gets thicker and thicker and turns into what we call glassine. So basically, it turns to like a glass-like state. So in the end, your body will become one solid. It will not be frozen uh, in the same way that a steak in your freezer at home is frozen because we all know that, sure, uh, if you put something in the freezer, it can last a long time, but, I mean, if you've left something in the back of your freezer for maybe a few years and then pull it back out, it's not exactly like new, no. The tissue does take damage from crystallization like that. But we can avoid that damage using our proprietary vitrification solution. Yeah. And once 99% of the blood has been replaced with solution V, we're then putting you in a cooling unit and gradually over a few days pumping this full of liquid nitrogen very, very gradually. We want to avoid a shock to your system, to your organ, to your organic system. So we're doing that over the course of a few days, cooling you down to minus 196 degrees Celsius. When your body has reached that temperature and your body is fully glassine and uh, solid and stable, then we will transfer you to a liquid nitrogen pod where you will remain for long-term storage until the day that, um, that we're able to wake you up in the future. Yeah. I know it is, um, it's a lot to think about, but uh, it is kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna do it myself one day. Probably not until I'm older. I would do it sooner, but um, I really find the research fascinating in the medical procedures, extremely fascinating. And I love helping people, love helping people achieve their dreams of seeing the future. Yeah. So I'm going to see the future myself someday. I don't doubt it. So are you ready? Inject the proof of all. Go. And if you want. 
do, you can um, count, let's not say backwards from 10, that's such a stereotype. Let's instead try and count the years ahead of us. And at some point, you're going to drift off to sleep. That's fine. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay. When you wake up, it's going to be the future. 2023. 2024. 2025. 2026. 2027 2028 2029 2030 2031 2032 2033 2034 2035 2036 2037 2039 2040 2041 2042 2043 